conservative leader Pierre Polyev is in the city right now. Yesterday, he made an announcement related to terrorism. He joins us live now in studio. Sir, it's really nice to see you. We Thank certainly you. have a lot to talk about. Um, I would like to start talking about the, the Pharmacare bill that just mm -hmm. went through the Senate because uh, this is a newer development. And we understand what's going to happen next with this bill. There are going to be conversations with the federal government and provinces and territories that would see certain medications covered now, uh, for example, diabetes. I'd like to get your take on this because I know you have concerns with this plan. And I'm curious, for Canadians who might start to rely on this plan to get their drugs covered, how could they be affected if, if your party forms government? Well, I suspect there will be very few people affected uh, at all because the vast majority, well over 90 percent of Canadians, are already covered mm -hmm. with private plans. Uh, and we support that. We also support ideas that would fill in the gaps for the very, very small minority of people who don't have drug coverage uh, and can't afford medication. Uh, unfortunately, this bill does not do that. In fact, it does something very uh, troubling that nobody's talking about. It pushes for something called a single-payer system. Now, what does that mean? It means that only the government would be allowed to be that single-payer and provide drug coverage. So if you are uh, a union worker whose uh, union has negotiated for you mm -hmm. a drug plan, in the long run, this bill seeks to eliminate that plan and force you onto a government plan. And we saw when Kathleen Wynne tried to do that provincially, uh, it ended up giving people worse coverage than they had before, all while building up a big bureaucracy. We also worry about companies saying, well, listen, if the government's going to have a plan, then then the, they'll drop the, their workers from the, the workplace plan and end up get, meaning people will get far fewer drugs covered than they had before. So a lot of people uh, are, are going to be very concerned when they start seeing that this plan, far from giving new coverage, is going to take away coverage that they already have. And I will never allow that to happen. So as a result, because of some of your concerns, mm -hmm. would you scrap this plan then if your party forms government? We were not going to have a single payer system that bans you and union workers and countless other people from keeping the excellent private plans they already have. And Trudeau and the NDP, frankly, they, they risk, if you vote for them, you risk losing your drug plan and getting a, a, a badly run, extremely expensive, slow government plan to replace it. And I think that's a terrible idea. You mentioned gaps that you would like to see filled yeah. as a result of this. What would that look like then? Well, there are, like I said, well over 90% of Canadians already have drug plans. There are a tiny, tiny minority of people who are not already covered by social assistance or by their workplace plan uh, that might uh, need some assistance. I think we should find out who they are. Mm -hmm. Instead, the government takeover Trudeau and the NDP Liberals are planning takes all the 90% of people that have plans, throws them off their plans, and says, well, one day we'll give you a government plan that will be... Uh, that will replace it. I, I think that is crazy. Why not just find the people who don't have coverage and help them? Mm -hmm. I also want to talk about your announcement from yesterday. Yeah. So we were in Toronto talking about this push for the government to put the Houthis listed as a, a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned this is something we've seen the United States do. They did this earlier this year. January. Um, we, we talked to or reached out to the public safety minister. <clears throat> they say they're they're talking with their allies. They're still looking at adding different groups to the list. What would this actually mean, though, this designation? How could this make Canadians feel safer and actually be safer? Well, there's two groups that I want banned right now. One is the Houthis. They're the ones that operate on behalf of Iran in the Gulf of Aden and in the Red Sea. They're firing missiles at civilians. Uh, they've attacked civilian uh, transport ships uh, and they've fired hundreds of missiles at, at civilians. They are a front for the Iranian dictatorship. Uh, and uh, they are legal. Right now, if they wanted to raise money, recruit, operate on Canadian soil, they could do it legally. I'm saying we have Section 8305 of the Criminal Code that um, allows the minister to list terrorist organizations as banned entities in Canada, mm -hmm. ban the Houthis so they don't come to Canada, just like the RGC did. They sent 700 agents to, agents to Canadian soil to harass the Persian and Jewish population. And it took Trudeau six years to ban them. We should ban not only the IRGC, but the, C but the, the Houthis. Then there's the Samadun. These are the people out burning our flags, throwing bombs at uh, and uh, uh, Molotov cocktails at synagogues, uh, fomenting hatred against Jews on Canadian streets. Uh, they should be banned as a terrorist organization because they are a proxy for other banned terrorist entities. So mm -hmm. ban the terrorists, keep our people safe, put Canada first for once. 
You talked about anti-Semitism. This is a, a huge issue mm -hmm. everywhere right now, but especially in the DTA. Our chief was just talking about this last week. We're seeing a, a rise in anti-Semitism, rise in, in Islamophobia. Uh, when it comes to hate <coughs> speech, hate crimes, do you think there needs to be a, a clearer definition on that and maybe even tougher penalties? Because this is a huge issue and it doesn't seem to be going away. Well, it was never like this before Trudeau. Let's keep in mind, we've had wars in the Middle East for centuries mm -hmm. uh, and we never saw it spill over onto Canadian streets uh, we never saw fire bombings of synagogues or bullets flying through Jewish school children's uh, uh, the windows mm -hmm. um, that never happened but Trudeau has pushed a dangerous and divisive ideology that separates people into different groups his border policies have been reckless uh, allowing uh, numerous ISIS terrorists to come into this country. He's allowed Samadun to continue to foment uh, anti-Semitic hatred on the streets. Uh, and um, that's the consequence we have after nine years of Trudeau. We have a 251% increase in hate crimes. 251% increase in hate crimes after nine years of Trudeau. We need to get rid of this ugly ideology, secure our borders, ban the terrorists, and unite our people, bring people together make this again the country that we were promised where it doesn't matter if your name is Martin or Mohammed Smith Singh or Steinberg we're all Canadians we have one set of common shared values and common freedom do you think though people take the charges seriously enough because in talking with the police locally they say you know these these are extensive <laughs> investigations they have to roll out is I don't think any enough? criminals take any charges seriously mm -hmm. after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals they know that even if they're caught they'll be released on bail within minutes we saw the uh, guy who, who, who shot the police officer last mm -hmm. week. He was out on bail after violating his probation orders 24 times. So, uh, you know, the Trudeau catch and release criminal justice system uh, signals to criminals, you can do whatever you want. You can terrorize, you can attack, you can kill, you can rape, and you will be out on bail within minutes to do it all over again. We need to get rid of that uh, catch and release, bring in jail, not bail. Uh, mandatory prison sentences to lock up the criminals and stop the crime. On bail reform, and we know that our Premier Doug Ford talked about this mm -hmm. last week too because he's frustrated knowing that the man who's accused of shooting this Toronto police officer had quite a rap sheet, right? So he's saying something needs to be done at the federal level. The, the Justice Minister saying, well, it's a provincial matter. It seems like there's a lot of back and forth here. No. How, how do you get involved in this? How do you change maybe the, the directive if that is something that you would you like just to have to change. repeal Justin Trudeau's bail law it's C 75 we didn't have these problems before Trudeau he brought in C 75 which brings in an automatic release uh, on bail for it's called the principle of restraint the judges are are forced to give the maximum leniency to the newly arrested criminal and so a after nine years of Trudeau we have a situation where in Vancouver the same 40 offenders were arrested 6,000 times in one year 150 arrests per offender per year I would bring in a law that says if you have a long rap sheet you will be ineligible for bail parole house arrest or probation it will be jail not bail jail not bail mm -hmm. when Pierre Polyev and the common sense conservatives are in office we know this is a huge deal too I mean we hear it from people every single day yeah. so um, we'll certainly be following up on that one I also wanted to ask you about some comments uh, Donald Trump made about looking at renegotiating the USMCA mm -hmm. uh, this agreement that was just negotiated when he was president if you become prime minister do you think this is a good thing taking another look at that that agreement and is there anything that stands out for you that you would like to to renegotiate I mean, to? Trudeau f uh, fell flat on his face and I, I, I was as a Canadian putting partisanship aside I was really saddened to see that the way tr Trump bulldozed over Trudeau in the last negotiations um, the, the Trudeau sign was forced to sign on to a deal that kept in place tariffs on our softwood lumber that banned our construction companies from working on Amer American construction projects that pre prevented us from getting the Keystone pipeline built and the list goes on uh, I want to get a deal that stands up for Canadian workers get rid of the softwood lumber tariffs allow our construction companies access to American job sites as they had under the previous conservative government when we negotiated that with Obama and Bush. Um, and finally, uh, the big thing that really worries me is Trudeau's 61 cent a liter carbon tax. I think the only person who likes the idea, who, who loves a Canadian carbon tax of 61 cents a liter more mm. than Trudeau is Trump. Because if we bring in a 61 cent a liter carbon tax, all our businesses are gonna go to the states. 
and they're gonna steal our money and, and jobs. I will ax the carbon tax, pass a bring it home tax cut, so that we bring back our businesses, our paychecks, our production, and lower prices for Canadians. I wanted to talk more, but I think we've run out of time, and I certainly appreciate you coming in to talk to us. I think we covered quite a bit. Thank you, sir, for your time. We'll Great be in touch. You. I'm sure we'll be talking again soon.